the Mughal Empire, an ancient Gurkhani empire that was located within the Indian subcontinent. Founded in 1526, a tremendous amount of information regarding this group of warriors has subsequently been unearthed over the centuries. A wealth of archaeological information, which has offered a glimpse back into our distant past, revealing many things about this ancient people, which, for a time, was lost in antiquity. However, although extensive archaeological exploration has unraveled many of the Mughals' mysterious existence, there remains a most perplexing enigma. In the 1980s, Smithsonian historian Emily Savage Smith embarked on a journey to acquire a set of perplexing ancient artifacts, now known as celestial spheres. Plotted upon the underside of a dome or hemispherical screen, the celestial sphere is a practical tool for astronomy even to this day, allowing the observers to plot positions of objects in the sky when distances are unknown or trivial. Most, as one would presume, display a primitive understanding of astronomical arrangements. However, some reluctantly revealed to the academic world, and since quietly archived away from inquisitive souls, have stumped all who have attempted to explain them based solely upon modern historical conformities. The majority of celestial spheres acquired can be cataloged into two distinct types, seamed spheres and their more elaborate, thus greatly more problematic counterparts, seamless spheres. Seamed spheres are, or were, made by molding two halves of the sphere separately and then soldering them together. The artisans and astronomers would then collaboratively engrave the surface. Seamless spheres, however, are another thing entirely. Up until Savage Smith made her discovery, it was thought by virtually all within the academic community, including metallurgists the world over, that all examples of hollow metal celestial spheres were of the seamed type. This owing to the long-held belief that creating seamless hollow metal spheres was impossible. As it turns out, it isn't. The most exquisite surviving example of a hollow seamless celestial sphere is one that is said to have been made by a Mughal metallurgical master named Muhammad Salid Tatawi in 1631. Although conveniently, it is unknown just how he figured out how to make the sphere, or indeed fill it accurately with astronomical information we have only recently confirmed as accurate. It makes one wonder just how did he learn such a technique, if of course it was he who created it. With no evidence to suggest that the Mughals could have even cast the bronze needed to create the sphere, you have to wonder, just where did they get this information from? Were the ancient Mughals visited by a race of ancient extraterrestrial beings? Did they discover a relic, an artifact, left by a vastly more ancient lost civilization which they claimed as their own? Unfortunately, the subject of seamless celestial spheres is little known within mainstream antiquity, and as such, in the few places they are discussed, the facts are often distorted or even completely made up. They are most certainly out-of-place artifacts, which some have attempted to brush beneath a rug of convolution. We always perceive this method of concealment to be strong evidence of a conspiracy. Just who could have made the Mughal celestial spheres? And more importantly, how did they make them? Perhaps one day, we will find out the truth. The Betts Mystery Sphere is perceived by a number of the world's leading ufologists as the most compelling piece of evidence to support the existence of extraterrestrial life ever released to the public. This bizarre, self-propelling, seamless metallic orb was discovered by Terry Matthew Betts during a massive bushfire on their property on Fort George Island in Florida in 1974. Due to the object's alleged supernatural capabilities, it quickly became the center of fascination amongst the general public, and an object of incredible interest for national scientists, military officials, and many other government bodies. When the family approached newspapers with their find, the story of the mystery sphere quickly spread throughout the international media. After a few weeks of its discovery, the sphere began to mysteriously resonate. 
the family also alleged it would seemingly be stuck in position on occasion, not able to be lifted or moved, also claiming it would often travel up inclines on its own. It would resonate if anyone played a guitar next to it, or if pushed, would change direction on its own, appearing to be more noticeable if in direct sunlight. Perplexed by the bizarre sphere and indeed the family's claimed experiences, it wasn't long before officials from NASA, the United States military, and the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization came to conduct studies. Intriguingly, their initial research noted that the steel sphere had not been manufactured or indeed tampered with in any way. Navy spokesman Chris Berlinger said to the press at the time, quote, Our first X-ray attempts got us nowhere. We're going to use a more powerful machine on it and also run spectrographic tests to determine what metal it's made of. There's certainly something odd about it. End quote. When military officials asked the Betts family if they could take the sphere back to their labs to conduct further research, the family declined. Eventually, it was seized by officials, at which point the family claimed it had been exhibiting overwhelming paranormal behavior. Slamming doors without being touched, often emitting a loud, strange music at night, and many other activities reminiscent of traditional poltergeist reports. After its seizure, the sphere was taken to Jacksonville Naval Air Station. When attempting to perform an X-ray, researchers allegedly found their machines weren't strong enough to see into its core. They also revealed that it was capable of withstanding an incredible 120,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. The Navy eventually used a 300 kilovoltage X-ray machine to peer inside. They discovered the sphere contained two items surrounded by a halo of materials. It also exhibited four magnetic poles, two negative and two positives. Unfortunately, the current whereabouts of the Bet sphere is, predictably, unknown, and it is likely to never be seen publicly again. What is the Bet sphere? A military instrument? An alien craft? Possibly an ancient advanced artifact? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Quote, Here we have some kind of animal. It looks like a dinosaur. When Professor Petoni found this statue, it was reportedly making a strange noise. So, upon further investigation, which involved a circular incision into the statue's stone, it was found to contain a small black ball. You can see this mysterious object resting within the opening. After further research surrounding this artifact, the professor informed me that somehow somebody must have performed a practical joke on them. When asked why, he replied, because the result of the research shows that this metal material is in fact, amazingly, chrome steel. However, as far as modern man is aware, chrome steel was only discovered for the first time during the beginning of the 20th century within Austria. That means it should have been impossible to have found some inside a statue with an astonishing estimated age of approximately 17,000 years. Professor Petoni was laughing in disbelief. He said, if a statue is making a strange sound, I do not open it right away. I also first performed several x-rays prior to his research. And clearly, within this still complete closed statue, is this unexplainable round chrome ball, proof the sphere was in existence before more detailed exploration was undertaken." End quote. That was an excerpt from one of Klaus Dona's many press interviews, specifically pertaining to one of the many seemingly impossible ancient out-of-place artifacts he so often covers within his work. Intriguingly, along with this detailed description of unfolding events surrounding their research of this unquestionably perplexing item, Professor Petoni side-noted that during his examinations of the object's outer shell, he also noticed that at some time within its long life, undoubtedly within antiquity, it had previously been expertly opened, presumably during a similar operation. 
Then, at some later date, and for some currently unknown reason, almost perfectly resealed. Was this task undertaken by a later advanced civilization? A group of individuals who also uncovered this artifact's inexplicable features. Possibly a lost civilization's ancient museum exhibit? Could it possibly be far older than the 17,000-year aging it is currently assigned with? It is undoubtedly highly compelling.